Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So in this one here, I want to talk about Daryl Dixon Season 2 because we actually got a, a, uh, a new teaser that I do want to talk about. I'll probably do another breakdown of the other teaser that came out. Um, because there's actually two teasers that came out. There's one that kind of looks more like a trailer. And then there's another one that is more like, well, there's two scenes. I mean, it's one scene entirely, but it's basically like a minute of Daryl and then a minute of Carol sort of thing. So I'll, I'll break that down here and then I'll do a Daryl Dixon teaser uh, video tomorrow as well. I have a bunch of the Ones Who Live content still coming, obviously, so I will be doing that uh, later on today. And yeah, we're just waiting on the news right now of when uh, The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon Season 2 is going to be out. And... I do think that it's probably going to be August, but it could be before that. It's probably not going to be June because for me personally, if they would have, you know, announced it as a June release date, we probably would have gotten that already, right? Because I think they announced the release dates like a couple of months beforehand. So because, you know, uh, August, like last year it came out in September, right? September 12th or 10th or something like that. So, um, you know, they are airing it in the summer. So I'm assuming that august makes the most sense they have interview with the vampire that's going to be coming out in uh may so i think that's that's may 12th and that runs until like the end of june i think it's actually june 30th so i don't see them airing the walking dead daryl dixon season two at the same time as interview with the vampire so i don't think that's going to be a thing so i think it's going to be after that which means probably in july and, uh, I mean, I think that could make sense. It depends on Comic-Con and all of that, right? So, around there, right? So, we'll probably get a trailer for sure at Comic-Con, but then again, it, there, there might be one that releases beforehand. I mean, if you look at the ones who live, they didn't really release a trailer at all, you know, for Comic-Con or anything. Like, yes, they did use those events to release, like, other teasers and stuff like that, but we sort of just got the trailer randomly for that. So, I think the same thing is going to happen here for uh, The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon Season 2. I think it's probably just going to drop at some point. Maybe next month, you know, there could be something this month, but right now we're just going to be waiting on news of all that. And so, yeah, but to me, I'm assuming it's going to be August just because I think Dead City is going to be out in February. And then I think Daryl Dixon season three will be out around the same time, summer of 2025. So I think they're going to be doing two shows a year spread apart like that. You know, there'll probably be like four months break in between, which, uh, you know, is definitely less content than we're used to. And I will say that is sort of a criticism, I would say, of the spinoffs right now, is that if you look at the first seasons of all three spinoffs, yes, like, I, I really did enjoy all of them. But, you know, like, the ones who live, the big criticism of that finale was that it felt so, so rushed, right? Like, there's the whole CRM aspect to it, and, uh, you know, people feeling really, you know, upset about that, the fact that they sort of rushed through that. But besides that, like, if that was always going to be the story, and it was always going to be a shorter story like that, then... I think that, you know, I think the issues of how fast it felt, you know, definitely is a thing. And I think for Daryl Dixon and for Dead City, there's an element to it there. Definitely those shows, you know, never had as, as much pacing issues as the ones who live, like for sure. But there were still some moments in those shows where I was like, you know, you could probably do an extra episode or two just to sort of build up a bigger backstory for this character, uh, do a bottle episode sort of thing and focus just on like, explaining this a little bit better right just so like people kind of you know understand things a little bit more especially for dead city like there was a lot of stuff in new york and like with that group that they were with and then there was also the whole arena thing like i think there could have been a lot more that was that was built up there so i'm hoping for season two of these shows that they do do more than six i think season two of daryl dixon's probably going to be six episodes though but after that you know i i hope that they do actually do more because i think that that's what people want and i think that yeah six episodes just isn't enough but let's actually break down the teaser here so in this first part here we do see uh daryl obviously in france here and it looks like there's some sort of ambush happening here with uh madame Genet, and i'm not entirely sure of what they're trying to do if they're trying to catch her specifically uh or if they're trying to just like free people that they have here because if you noticed there's actually this truck here that after they, they you know they stop them uh daryl goes into the back of the truck or they open it up anyways and you see a bunch of people in the back and it looks like they're prisoners i'm assuming anyways and what i'm wondering about is if they are prisoners are they being held here because they're going to be test subjects right I don't know if, like, it depends on how they study and work on the variants, right? Because we don't know a lot of that. Like, you know, like, why do they need certain people to, to work on as variants? Like, is it just, you know, random walkers that they find? Or is there something specific about what they're, what they're using to test, right, with these variant walkers? And so I wonder if that's a part of the storyline here, right? If, uh, because obviously the variant walker stuff is going to be explored a lot more here in this season, right? Like that was kind of introduced at the very end there of, of season one. And I think that they're going to question a lot of what they're doing here. Madame Janae 
is going to be looking for Daryl, right? Like, she's still upset about what obviously happened there. So I, I do think that that's going to be a big part to it here. But, you know, the fact that this is episode one and we see her here, you know, it's uh, it's kind of crazy because obviously she was like a big, a big reveal in the first season. And, you know, whether or not she's going to die in this season here depends on where the story goes overall. I will say I would prefer her to not die here right away, but it depends on, I guess, the the point of the story here. The Walker variant stuff is very, very interesting. I think if they got rid of the Walker variants, that would concern me a lot, and I would definitely, like, it's such an interesting part of everything, and th that's what makes this show really exciting. And honestly, it makes it a little bit more exciting than The Ones Who Live. Like, The Ones Who Live, looking back at it now, like, yes, the Ricky Michonne part was really, really awesome, but the CRM stuff definitely was very underwhelming. I thought, you know, it, it would be a much bigger arc, and it really was just that. It was such a small arc in, you know, told within six episodes, and yes, there was World Beyond before that, but this has been built up over the years. Like, there's been connections to, like, almost the beginning when Rick first saw that helicopter. Like, there's been so much of this all built up for just this, you know? So definitely, I would say it was pretty underwhelming. It was still epic in terms of, you know, what they introduced with it and the fact that Rick was there and all that. There's still some really cool stuff, you know, that they did in the beginning. It's just how it all ended that I'm definitely, I'm always going to not like. And I think in a season two, you know, there's a lot of places they're able to go. Like, they can definitely do some really interesting stories in terms of reuniting with certain characters, having them around. And, uh, you know, they will be around for like all six episodes, which is kind of cool, unless they do eight or maybe even like 10 episodes later. But that does seem to be the focus. You know, it's not necessarily just like reuniting the characters, which is a lot of fun. It's more having the characters have screen time together and having a whole story with those characters. Right. So I think that's what was awesome about the Ricky Michonne show was the fact that you had Ricky Michonne together right away in the first episode. And they had a whole season together, you know, with a, with a story and all that. So I think that if Daryl. Negan, everyone else, if they were to reunite with Rick at some point in the future, I mean, they're going to obviously, right? But I think it's going to be done in that very same way where it's sort of, it happens in episode one or two or something. And then they're together pretty much the entire season. But yeah, really cool scene here with Daryl. Uh, honestly, it was very cool just to actually, you know, just, it's refreshing. It's refreshing to see this. Like I, I the ones who live just got so crazy by the end. And uh, I'm not saying that in a bad way or anything like that. It's just that you know, we, we we got what that story was. We talked about it so much and everything. And then, you know, you get to Daryl Dixon here and it's just like, it's refreshing to see this. We know what this world is like. We know what the story is like here. Uh, it's going to be really cool because Daryl this season is probably going to find out that Rick went back home. Um, you know, if Carol did find that out, it depends on the timeline. I know this show is supposed to be set later, but it depends. You know, like they change the timelines a lot. Like usually you would think that. Then all of a sudden it's different, you know, like they change stuff up a lot. So we're just going to have to wait until we actually see the scene. And then, you know, that like that'll tell us everything there. But yeah, this show is obviously going to be really amazing. But yeah, then we see Carol here in this scene and she obviously arrives to the same spot that Daryl was in in season one. And this is where he was obviously taken away and eventually was working on that ship and all that. And eventually that ship went to France and, and all that here. So yeah, Carol's here and uh, she's asking like, do you know, you know where my friend is? Uh, you know, his name is Daryl Dixon because obviously she has his bike here, which is obviously a continuation of that ending scene in season one, which is kind of, I guess, the post credit scene. Not really. Honestly, I feel like they should do post credit scenes sometimes and not really have those scenes as like ending scenes. Because I think as a post credit scene, it just makes it more exciting. Whereas I think ending it there is a little weird considering that it's not really the end of the story and it's kind of random. So I feel like it works better as a post credit scene. I don't know. That's just, that's just my opinion. But anyways, yeah, we see Carol asking around here and at first they don't know who he is, but then someone's like, oh yeah, I know who Daryl is. And eventually Carol sees his crossbow and it's like, okay, yeah. So she knows for sure that Daryl was for sure here. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, that was just, uh, as soon as you see that, you're just like, oh, like the, th the thing about Carol that I really like about her and it, it's just it's her demeanor overall as a character and i think that's what's so amazing about the walking dead cast is that there's something special about every single character you know that's why i think they became so popular was that they all brought something very unique here right and for carol when you see her here in this scene you know she acts like she's not a strong person at all she's just kind of like oh, okay like she acts like she's overly nice right and then all of a sudden she grabs the crossbow and obviously there's probably a part to her that's a little scared obviously because it's like i mean you're just by yourself here and there's everybody here right but it's just like i mean she's done this a lot before like she does not care she's going to find daryl right so yeah, just really incredible to actually see this here, to have Carol holding the crossbow, which is just really incredible. Honestly, I'm just kind of surprised by how big the crossbow is. Like, that just kind of stood out to me. But 
yeah, this looks absolutely incredible. I really can't wait. And it's funny because that this is how Daryl is going to get his crossbow in season two, because obviously he did have it in season one, but it was like in flashback. So obviously for season two, at some point, I don't know when Daryl and Carol are going to reunite. I don't think it's going to be in episode one, like maybe at the very end, like maybe a lot of this is happening in the very beginning of episode one. And we see Carol's journey to France throughout that first episode. And then at the very end of episode one, we see Daryl and Carol reunite. I think that's possible because I know that they probably will be together based off of filming anyways. Like I know in episode three around there, I think they were already together. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm just going based off of I know they filmed for a few months and I think it takes three to four months to film, you know, a season of, of six episodes. And when they announced her casting and stuff, she was already filming for it was like just in the beginning of them filming. So I'm just going based off that, you know, so probably not episode one, but maybe that's the cliffhanger for episode one, maybe going into episode two, maybe it's done in the same way as the ones who live. But yeah, I'm really excited about this show. This is going to be all that we're talking about. And I really can't wait to see Carol's reaction to the variant walkers. I can't wait to see how much the variant walkers are going to change as well, because the biggest part to the variant walkers was that whenever a walker saw each other. Uh, they just killed each other, right? So you need to change that, right? Like that's a big flaw in creating those variant walkers. Like you want to be able to have those walkers because Madame Genet wants to use them as weapons, right? So you want to be able to use them at your own command, right? And so if you have five walkers or 10 walkers together and they're all variants, they're just all going to kill each other at this point there. So if they can work on that, obviously, and get them to a point where it won't do that and they'll just attack like humans, you know, then then, oh man, I can't even like, because remember, we've only seen, you know, Daryl and like others deal with like one variant walker, right? Like, and that was a lot to just deal with one because like, it's not even like they bite you and stuff, they'll claw at you and everything. So they're very, very different. You get like three of them chasing you, like you really stand no chance. It's not like three walkers, right? So yeah, obviously this is going to be very, very interesting here. And I really can't wait to see uh, just what the season does here, because I think the, a big focus for this season is going to be on that, right? I think Carol's probably going to be the one that kind of starts that storyline because she's going to see that and be like, what is this, right? And I wonder if it's going to be Carol in the end that does kill Madame Janae. I could see that being possible. But anyways, post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.